episode 43 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am discussing The Brightest Thing in the World, the new play by Leah Nanako Winkler, directed by Margot Bordelon, having its world premiere at Yale Repertory Theater through December 17th at their theater at 1120 Chapel Street in New Haven, Connecticut. As a new piece, The Brightest Thing in the World has potential. I like the premise. Steph, played by Michelle Celine Ong, is a generally private woman who regularly visits a bakery coffee shop in Lexington, Kentucky, and quickly builds a friendship and then a romantic relationship with one of the employees there, Lane, played by Catherine Romans. The two discover more about each other, their similarities and differences, like their opinions on men, religion, guns, and so forth. The linchpin of the play settles when Lane admits to Steph that she is a recovering heroin addict and the bakery is owned by the halfway home across the street. Lane doesn't live there. She lives with her sister Della, played by Megan Hill. Through all this, the brightest thing in the world is light, funny, inspiring, and tender. Though the dialogue feels a bit 90s sitcom-esque at times, the romantic chemistry between Celine Ong and Romans is genuine and endearing. This all takes a very dramatic turn on Christmas at Della and Lane's place when Lane collapses in the bathroom from an opioid overdose, and this is where the play falls apart for me. The tonal shift here doesn't work. Though I admire Nanako Winkler's attempt at creating a humorous piece surrounding what is a genuinely horrific issue that is the opioid crisis in our country, the attempt to lace humor into the tragic moments of the piece does not work. Or, if the intent was for it to be funny at these points, there end up being moments that are unintentionally funny because the first half of the play is so light. For example, during the aforementioned scene of Lane's overdose, Della runs across the stage and comes back in with an axe to break down the bathroom door, which brought out unintentional laughter and when she administers CPR, she sings Staying Alive. It also draws unintentional laughter. Now, I understand singing alive is actually what you're supposed to do when you give chest compressions because it is the correct tempo to help get the heart going again, but in a theatrical situation where the play has been resting comfortably in its humor, such a dramatic moment doesn't stick the landing. I think the problem with the storytelling is that there is no foreshadowing and this play desperately needs it. I get that Nanako Winkler wants to have the play avoid stereotypical addict behavior that is seen in most representations in television, film, and stage, which is fine, but dropping early hints in the first half that things aren't going to go so well in the second half that the audience can pick up, but not necessarily Della and Steph, can table set the rest of the play, giving the audience moments of not necessarily dread, but at least concern that Lane may not be telling the whole truth about her and her addiction. Otherwise, everything sits very surface during the first half, especially since what is prepped for us as potential character conflict like religion and gun rights are completely dropped after the first 15 to 30 minutes. Even more so, considering there's an obvious Chekhov's gun moment that gets negated as well. Still, there are good things about The Brightest Thing in the World. The three ladies are mostly wonderful. I especially love Megan Hill's slightly off-color and body Della, and as I said before, when Catherine Romans and Michelle Celine Ong share the stage, particularly for their more intimate moments, they are excellent together. Celine Ong does have the unfortunate task of taking on some of the most dramatic moments of the play, which don't land because of the aforementioned split identity of the piece. I don't blame her for that. She does her best with what she's given. I love Kat Rayner's scenic design. I'd love to sit in an actual bakery that is how she designed this set piece to be. And Della and Lane's home is perfectly warm and inviting. The brightest thing in the world isn't bad. There is a good message here. I would like to see it balanced better. It reminds me of Good Morning Vietnam, another comedy filled with tragedy and drama. Though it is funny, the drama of people dying in war is ever-present. I think in this situation, maybe the brightest thing can evolve into something similar and really become something special. But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see the brightest thing in the world, I'll leave a link in the description. You can support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be the Broadway show Ain't No Mo. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.